The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pezzavento. I hope Larry's feeling a lot better. And uh, <clears throat> my pleasure to be here. I'm usually Monday through Friday. Well, this Friday I won't be here because it's Easter, Easter Friday. But Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon, I do the opening. I do the Tiger Technicians Hour. My daily service is called the Opening Call. And most importantly, what we are uh, looking at right now in this particular hour where I'm doing Larry's show, I'm looking at <clears throat> the E-minis which have had a very, very nice move to the upside. ESM 13, oh, ESM 14. I'm wondering why it's the wrong one. ESM 14 had a beautiful one. I'm going to talk about this now because it's Larry's show, and Larry loves to look at those uh, one-to-ones. He loves to look at the, the price match. But I'm also looking at something that's a little different to, uh, to usual in that there's a technique that I discovered oh, quite some time ago. And the most important thing about the technique <clears throat> is that when I'm looking at the uh, – the price coming down or the price going up and there's a potential for a match and that match says I can move to the upside but at the same time what you've got to be aware of is that there is a time a price expansion Larry likes to draw triangles and sometimes you'll get the price match with the triangle, I look at it a little differently. I've just got a plain old A to B equals C to D in the same angle. And that to me is really important. In other words, it's giving you time where the high of 1892.50 back on the uh, 4th of April, let me just type that in 4 4, so I've always got it in 4 4, <clears throat> came down to the low of 4 8 at uh, 1830.75 so that's 88 and then I think is it 810 I think it is 8 uh, 48 48 and then it pops up to the high so the price from 1892.50 to 1830 on the 4th of April to the 8th of April has a rebound so it goes A to B now you get your B to C and that goes to 1867.50 on the 10th let me put in the 10th here for 10 Right there, four, <clears throat> four, ten. And then you get the one to one extension in price and time, which comes down to this morning. And instead of stopping at about 807, it goes to 803.25. I have a couple of points extra, but it really has the pattern of the one to one, what I call a Chapman Wave price time extension. For me, it's important. This particular pattern works either with time or with price but preferably with both, and yet it's done it with both. If today, in fact, is a turnaround day and there is a rally that can last a couple of days, at least two days, because that's what we had from the low, uh, the most recent low on the 8th. So that should take us, if there's a, even a price match, then the price 1830 to 1867, that 37-point rally, should take us to 1837, while 1840 is the nine-period exponential moving average. There's a chance for that. And that's important. Now, most important as well in looking at uh, the chart formations is that the weekly chart is pulled back so much that you have to consider the previous peak in the E-mini uh, weekly is G, not B. It's probably G. Now, I, I didn't have time. I, I did, but I forgot to use it efficiently because yeah, I did want to look at the S&P during my, my show uh, in the last hour. I'm going to do it now. I spent a great deal of time in this over the last m months, months and months and months. Um, that is the daily chart of the S&P. I decided that what I was looking at a little while ago, in fact, has tremendous validity. 
and that is the low of 1746.20, made the week of the 8th of November, which was retested with a fractional undercut um, in 2014, the week of the 7th of February, I'm looking at a weekly chart at 1737.92, is in, flat, in fact a Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart. Woo! What on earth is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, CWUFBR. <laughs> six letters. What is it? The core of the Chapman wave is that you identify real simply the lowest, most identifiable low bar. You merely count each successive peak. It should take you to a D, can take you to EF and even a G, but D is really what you want to get. Then over the many, many years, decades in fact, that I've spent on this, I found that at peak D, an incredible amount of things can happen at peak D, and that it's a very, very important moment because if there is a certain configuration, the price could go higher. You could go, in fact... E with a parallel wave count slash A, F slash B, and that means that you've got a... What's beautiful about this technique is that it says you have got the potential for a new buy signal that goes to a buy mode that can even go to another D, E, or even an F, and very often it goes to an F. Well, lo and behold, if I use that technique right here on the first, the week of the 1st of November with a breakout the week of the 15th of November, then what we've got here is a Chapman Wave unconventional flat base. What makes it unconventional? There are two things that, call, that I call reasons why I call it a flat base restart, because the price keeps coming down no matter how high, it keeps coming down towards that, that little trough made off the peak D, in this case the 1746 low of the week of the 8th. <coughs> and as you look at it, you see that it broke it at one time, but that was actually still C, G slash C. What happens is it goes higher, and all it does is invariably it only makes two more peaks, and one of those is either an E or an F. In this case, it didn't make two, it made three. One was fractionally higher, but I have to count it. That is the technique. <clears throat> Uh, Zito in the dance says, Basil, SBX Weekly, why introduce this new interpretation now? Uh, well, first of all, it's not a new interpretation. It's an old interpretation. Secondly, well, it's an, it's an old technique. In the interpretation, I had spent ages looking at this, and I had circled this earlier, and I didn't know if I should use it or not. It didn't seem necessary because it made a gene, and we had a very sharp pullback to the 1737. But there's no way to explain those three new all-time highs. Yeah, the three new all-time highs. One is at uh, the week of the 7th of March at 1883.57, then fractionally higher at 1883.97. That was made on the 21st of March, just fractionally higher, but it absolutely counts. Every, every peak and trough counts. The wave is the waveform that never sleeps. And then it goes to 1897.28, three weeks ago. I, I, there's no other way. I would have a C and a C that fails at an all-time high in a weekly chart. Uh, I don't think I've seen maybe maybe once or twice in some stocks, but it is so rare. I, I do not, first of all, I do not form fit to make things fit my technique. If it doesn't fit into a particular technique within the Chapman Wave, uh, I just have to say, sh sh shrug my shoulders and wave my hands and say, I, I just don't know. In this case, I do know, and I'll explain why. Because the D, E, and F that was made uh, in, uh, in March to April from the week of the March the 7th, look at the MACD failing. Look at the stochastic. This is really important. The stochastic didn't have the strength. It's failing. Look at the, sto um, the MACD, that is. The stochastic is under 80%. On balance volume has made a new recovery high with the price, but it is an A, B, C, D. It is also a, a very near a, a, a peak. The relative strength index is way down, failing miserably. My suspicion is that we've made a top of significance and that we will come down. If we've got a, a price time match, we should, by the week of the 30th of May, come back to be testing 1737.92. I'm making it as simple as possible. This whole technique is completely wrong if there's an all-time high above 1897.28, even if 
it's by one penny. So I hope that clarifies it. You and I have looked at this S&P for I don't know how long. Everything about this technique, you use uh, Larry's technique to get your beautiful short position right at that uh, Z that's in the den. Um, um, and, and you use that technique to get a fantastic gain on the E-mini. Um, that was, in fact, a very similar matching uh, process in my work. It was the lettering that was not right. And I spent a lot of time. And I, as I say, I don't want to make up something. That is exactly what happened. If I look at the 120 minute chart, oops, that's the wrong one. If I go to the 120 minute chart right there, you will see that a week from Friday um, on the 4th, we in fact made a peak E um, at 1884.31. Um, and then the one before that <clears throat> was 18. 83.37. So everything seems to be in place. That's a right. That that is a perfect rogue wave. Let me explain that as well. Chapman wave technique. When you look at that peak D in the 120 minute chart that was made at um, 11:30 on the 1st of April, and you see that it's pulling back. It's pulling back with the MACD turning down and stochastic pulling back sharply. When if you were short, you were correct. But in fact, what happens with a short position in the rogue wave methodology is that out of the blue, there's a sudden spike that takes out the previous high. Sometimes it's an all-time high. In this case, it was. It scares the daylights out of the shorts, and they cover. They, it, it holds up just long enough for the shorts to cover. For the people who, who, who were long and got out of the long positions to go back into their long positions, and the very bar turns into in, usually in, uh, some kind of inverted Roman candle or, or an evening star or something, but the, the, the body of the candle closes at the low. And you shake your hands and say, oh, jeez, oh, man, I it was absolutely right and I got out and I did it. Uh, you're wrong. If you can recognize it and you can add your short positions or start short positions there, the, the candle that turns around, that the, I have an expression, that, uh, well, it's a little statement. A, a, a diagrammatic schematic. The rogue wave is like a wave that where, the, where you go to the beach and it says high tide at noon. At 12.06, you just, you're at the edge of the water. You, you find your favorite rock. You say, okay, tide's going out. I'm going to find this beautiful rock. Sit there with my sunglasses. I've got my suntan lotion on. I've got my, my book that I want to read. I've got my cup or whatever it is, glass or whatever it is. And you've got your towel down. And the next thing, cuss, splash. By the time you've wiped your glasses and you wipe, you look around, the tide's going out. You don't even know what happened. That's a rogue wave. The tide had already turned. There was just this one wave that didn't see the sign, didn't see the traffic light. Well, the very next candle usually is a very ugly candle. That is typical. And look what happened. It went from that 1884 area. Uh, what was it? 18, no, I'm sorry, 1894 area. Whoosh! Down to the 1830, 70. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. I'll be right back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. 
For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you are under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment and the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. I'm looking at Charlie. I got an email during the break. Uh, uh, hoping it was well. Thanks for mentioning MTW was in peak F as I'm still holding long. I'll keep an eye on it. Also note earnings are due April the 29th at market close. So, question today is AMLP, a dividend of 6%. This looks like a nice dividend stock in a trading range. It's getting towards the top of the range in the weekly chart, AMLP, trading at 18.01, up 8 cents. Uh, weekly chart, leg D. Uh, it, it, you know, when I look at stocks that are in, in a rectangle formation like this, I just said to myself, as it gets closer to the upper side of the of the rectangle, in this case, as it gets to 18.36, it's like 30, 35 cents away, then you've got to be a little bit careful. Uh, it could start to pull back within a trading range that, you know, one point, one and a quarter points in an $18 stock. It's, if you've got a dividend and you feel it's going to continue trading in the range, I have no problem with that. It's acting well, especially in this environment. The monthly, this is... An infrastructure index stock made a low at some point um, in August of 2011, way down at 11, uh, 1310, has a high of 1836, and it's trading close to the higher end, looking very good. I, I don't think I would want to mess around uh, with this. Only thing I would say is <clears throat> if and, and, and when it does pull back, I'd just be watching, let me just see, this is a 1732, 1731. So this starts your leg, this starts the buy, buy. so this is a beautiful H pattern, successful test. Well, it's successful because it, it, it closed above the left side low. This is a good test, the left side peak, and it does that and breaks above it. So this is A, B, it's still acting well, it's in C in the daily. I like it, I think you've got a good eye, this is, this is a great looking stock. Um, I'm just saying that if it gets 25, 30 cents higher, then I, 
I'd just be watching it. I wouldn't really do anything. I would, on the other hand, if it broke 1770, I'd say, you know what? It can go down another 50 cents to test the lower part of the band. Be prepared with your 6% dividend. If it's a long-term stock, it looks like it's in a trading range and it will continue to bounce around in here. So I'm not going to say, normally I'd say, don't, use cap don't lose capital gains when you're only getting a few percent uh, 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 premium from your, your the interest or whatever it's bearing. So this is not one of those cases in the sense that I think I like the stock. I think it has further to go, both on the upside and in this rectangle formation. It has 1773, very strong support on the weekly chart, 1784 on the daily. I still expect AD. I'm, I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to turn the page. I hope to look at it again, maybe later in the week. I'll put it down here as AMLP, AMLP, and it's at 1801. What's it doing? And right now, congratulations, it is a very nice looking chart, good good position uh, entry there, and I would hold it. Now, there are a couple of questions. Now, I'm not sure if the TYT, TYT was changed to a different name. Uh, massive Calvin Wave, B, by the way, Calvin Wave. Uh, once this Calvin Wave passes through the equator uh, equatorial Pacific in the 130W to 100W range, uh, wait, what, what, oh, we're talking about weather. Oh, okay, we're talking about weather. <laughs> I, I was looking for a, a symbol for the uh, Kelvin wave. I don't have one. And uh, so it's something to take note of. I, I'm just mentioning here. It's just Mother Earth trying to balance herself. All right, thanks, Edgerton. I, I, I just I was looking at it as a stock. Now, this is very important. Look, when, when you would listen to McDonald's, I looked at all those investors' business daily top 50. I looked at not all. I looked at, what, 10 of them or something? McDonald's is a leg D in the daily, leg C in the weekly. It's an overlapping way. It could be actually, a, no, no, it's brand new. It's a leg C in the, in the, in the um, weekly, but it's got the tough formation in the monthly. And that's saying that the defensive type stocks, like a McDonald's, let me check Clorox, like a like a Clorox, are holding pretty darn well. But my my impression while Clorox is holding well, it's had a, quite a pretty big move to the downside from the 96s down to the 83s and now 88. So, uh, but within that context, that's a good Coke because I haven't been that impressed with Coke, but who knows? Let's have a look at it right now. It's holding quite well, actually. Uh, it made a legs a B in the weekly, holding the nine period moving average. I don't think it's going anywhere. But it hasn't broken down. That, to me, is impressive action that it hasn't broken down under these conditions. It has, in fact, gone to a leg E in the, um, I'm calling it E for now, at least in the daily chart. So I'm going to be watching those, of the, not defense, but defensive. Now, this is going to be the surprise. These are the defense stocks. Crazy. Opens with a 101 round number high. Goes to peak F. I'll be back and we'll talk about these defense stocks. This is going to be interesting. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry. Dow's up 132, so he's up 60. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is back with another Tiger Dollar special, and as part of this promotion, not only can you receive up to a 25% bonus on whatever you spend, but you can also gain access to a five-part live webinar series with Tom O'Brien taking place the week of April 28th. Each morning during the week at 8 a.m., Tom O'Brien will walk you through how he sets up the market live and digest the previous day's trading action while analyzing overnight markets abroad in order to anticipate what kind of trading day to expect. Each 60-minute live morning webinar will be archived by around 9.30 a.m. that very morning so that if you can't attend live, it'll be available for your viewing pleasure on demand whenever you're ready. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service and they never expire. So now is a great time to lock in extra savings on all TFNN products. Don't miss out on Tom O'Brien's five-part webinar series. Get your Tiger Dollars today with up to a 25% bonus on whatever you spend before this special is over by visiting TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can't use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mo in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Right, let me just double. Uh, I, I had a question. Yes. The uh, stuff we were looking at MLP, uh, Alarian uh, Master Partners, uh, that is a limited partnership ETF. Um, it consists of all the major pipelines. Um, so um, I thought you'd like to know exactly. And when I said infrastructure, that's basically it and um, acting very well. And uh, to add to it, mm, now there's a question to add to it, huh? Add to it, AMLP, AMLP. <clears throat> if you add to it, I would add to it right now at 1801. Because this is leg C, it should pull back and then make a D. How leg C, you really want to continue tomorrow, maybe even into Thursday, and then pull back and make leg D. That means it can go to that 1835 area. But your in your case, I, you're looking for a longer term position, so I would treat this that I am adding, <clears throat> but I would put a stop. I would include that six percent dividend in the stop right now. So I did, would not want to take a capital loss on this particular position. The other is in much earlier. And the only reason I say that is because right here it's starting to go into that area that it hasn't broken above. If it had broken and I had a history on the left side, I'd be able to say, oh, yeah, great, it was once at 19-something, but it isn't. So I, I need to be a little careful here and just treat it as a trade. And if it keeps going higher, that's exactly what you want. That was the one question. The other one was EEM, which I, I spent some time Friday saying that it was holding well, it had a nine period moving average at 4161. At this particular point, EEM, that's the emerging market ETF uh, trading at iShares, trading at 4185. 
has a, a high of 42.47. Let me just type that in. From last week, 42.47. So that tells me <clears throat> that the nine-period exponential moving average is holding well, but you've got that little red line. You see it look, look closely. If you're looking at the left side chart, that is the that is the um, daily chart, weekly chart in the middle, monthly chart in the, in, on the right. Big C in the weekly stall. This could be a peak C this week, so you've got to see um, a higher high about 4247 to extend leg C this week. That's what you that's what you really want to see. Now I can put an up arrow because it's gone to a strong leg C and says that this should be a D. There, there was a previous peak C that failed, so we might be looking at a pattern. But most importantly, the magnet of the inside track declining trend line in the monthly chart is saying that in the left side, right side price time match, if I put a, a measured move from there to there to there to there, that takes you into later in the year and says there should be a breakout in the EEM above this, at least an attempt to break above this trend line resistance. And the first trend line resistance in EM in the monthly is at 44.18, it's called a 44.25. And then what you want to see is a break above 45.70. You really want it to go into the 46s in April. That'll be fabulous action. Because the moment it breaks above 45.33, that's going to be leg C in the monthly chart. That's really what you want to see. A breakdown of the EM means that the 40.4161 is the nine period moving average support in the daily, but it's the monthly that has, I mean the weekly that has 40.60 and 40.76, 75 as the nine period. Uh, moving average and the 200 period moving average support and the we're looking to see if the fast moving average crosses the slow moving average because that will give impetus for further upside activity holding really well EEM um, and that's important that's the that's the uh, emerging markets now what's really important also is that looking at the action right now we have just broken out <clears throat> in a leg A, B, C in the two-minute chart, and that is very important. Why? Because it's saying that there is concerted strength in the E-minis, in the S&P, in the Dow, which is now up 150, S&P is up 18. And that kind of strength you don't want to ignore. You want to consider that it is trying to get back the terrible, terrible session that was excellent on Friday, and we've done that in the day in the, in the Dow. We've gone to a higher high. That to me is really important. Just glance here. Oh, I forgot to mention. Oh, can you believe it? I don't believe that I forgot to mention it. I, I think I discussed it in my overview section and then completely forgot to give the result. I had, a, I had an implication on Friday. One of the reasons why I wanted to go along was because the implication of Friday in the Chapman Wave uh, Trend Index is that there would be a very strong, surprising move in the futures that should, in fact, carry over into the S&P cash. I had it all in my mind. I think I completely forgot to put it into my to the, to my uh, overview section. Let me double check here. Oh, how dumb is that? Spent so much time this weekend on the charts. Overview market today. I think forgot to mention it in detail. Oh, that is silly because that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be long. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, this say whopping 20% of the returns. Da -da -da. Yeah, the VIX, oh, no, I mentioned the VIX volatility index completely forgot about the Chapman Wave trend gauge, which was flashing on Friday. Well, that was one of the reasons why we wanted to go along <laughs> today. And then I forgot to mention it as a technique. So that's the way it is. Um, now, the 120-minute chart has just gone slightly above the, the 200 period exponential moving average, the Dow exp, um, um, uh, resistance, which is at 16,158, uh, I think, and we're now at 16,174. There has been a reversal in the volatility index from peak E. Remember, that's, what, that's one, another reason why I said that I wanted to be long. And let's go. Oh, we've got calls on the line. Gee, Mr. Look at the number of calls. Let's go to Mike in Pennington. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, Bagel. How are you doing today? I'm sorry that I didn't see the calls. I was so busy uh, looking at my charts. <laughs> You'd like to look at? Tesla. Okay. Tesla, folks, is trading. Whoops. Let me get it right here. T-S-L-A. Um, 
Yes. So Tesla had a nice bounce, and now it's given that back. It's down 85 cents at 202.93. I'm suspicious of Tesla here. I think that Tesla's under tremendous pressure. It's made a peak in the weekly, a G slash C in the monthly. So monthly is still very good looking. Um, the stochastic is way lower than it was at the previous high, but the MACD fast moving average is good. I'm a little suspicious. I think that Tesla is under pressure. And Tesla is going to be one of those that might, unlike Facebook, which I think has a little bit more, uh, um, um, a little bit more internal strength right now. I think Tesla's got a lot of resistance. Are you long or short of what? I bought a put Friday, but Friday morning. Uh, Mike, look at the. Look at the I bought uh, do a you put have a position Friday. in it? Yeah, I. I own one Oops, put on I lost Mike. I don't know why. Something happened. Mike, I don't know if I, I'm just going to do the analysis. I'm not sure whether you mentioned okay. something to me. I didn't hear it. All I can say is that now. I would not be long Tesla right now. I would yeah. probably be looking to short Tesla. It's one of those that I'd, I'd rather not be long, even if it rallies. I'd rather be looking to short it, and it's a two hundred and two point eighty two. Wow, what a pity they didn't rally and hold today. Well the day's young. Two oh eight forty four. If this thing can get up to two ten to two thirteen and then just stall dead, if it's not able to rally further than that, I think Tesla's coming down. I have a price of about one seventy six on Tesla looking out. So I hope that um oh, someone's in the den. I didn't hear that. He's short with one put from fight. Hold the put. Right. Yes, right. you're in the right position. I have a target. Now, it might bounce, but I have a target for it. In the, if it breaks under 196, my target would be the 182 to 176 area. 176.85 is the nine-period exponential moving average in the monthly chart. So, uh, oh yes, congratulations. You've got a great position there. Um, I'm a little surprised I actually failed today. It looked to me like if it had rallied, I thought enough people would want to keep holding it up. The MACD is not so good. Stochastic is very poor. You're in the right position, so congratulations. Thanks. So, so Thanks. keep holding that. I, I, I would, I would add another put if it did do that rally I was speaking about, uh, because I think it is going to go lower. So, congratulations, Mike. Let's go to Ari in Arcadia. Hi, Ari. How are you? I'm doing very well, Basil. Are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Am I doing something here with my volume? Do I not hear anybody? Let me can you hear me? Oh, my volume. There you are. Hi, Ari. Can you hear me, Basil? Yeah, yeah, that was my fault. I don't know how it, it uh, my, during the break, I must have hit something and the volume just disappeared. So, um, Ari, and I'm sorry, Mike, if you were talking, I didn't hear you. I must have talked over you or whatever. All right, Ari, you're looking at? Um, CHK, Chesapeake Energy, and I'm looking at it monthly. Yes, me too. So I got A, B, it's in leg, C, peak, C. Is that what you get? Yes, yeah, C in the monthly. C in the monthly, holding the nine period exponential. A very important month because it looked as if it wasn't going to be able to, with the doji candle of March, that it wasn't going to try to move up, and it is. So this is what I'm looking at Chesapeake Energy, CHK, trading at 26.71, up 55 cents. I used to have this notated back and forth and forth and back. I, I you know, I'll have to figure out what to do here. A, B, C, D. I believe it's a D in the monthly, and then it pulled back. This is what I'm looking at, Ari. <clears throat> it's really important that Chesapeake holds above the nine-period moving average in the monthly chart, about 2570. That's a one point away. When I look at the weekly chart, um, one, yes. Oh, the pattern that we're looking at right now, there's a pattern. It's, it's not exactly what I always look at. But it's a trading band. It's a fairly narrow trading band. It takes its time to consolidate. It's had a tremendous amount of time to consolidate. All it needs to do to break out is to go above the high of the week of the 28th of February, above 27.46. Now, I say go above it. I don't mean just to hold above it. It actually needs to close above it. If it does that, then you're looking at the left side of 27.82, the high of the week of the 3rd of January. And then the candle, the, the high of uh, the peak C high of 29.06, that becomes a target on the upside with a leg D. That's the reason why I'm really looking at this to see if the stochastic can build the energy to push the MACD higher 
And that's going to say, great, now the MACD is positive, it can actually start to move. So this is a very important week, and what I want to see in the daily chart is you've got A, this is B. Oh, you know what you need to look at. You need to see a move over 2696 for leg C. If it does that, preferably it does that and holds above that for the close, that's going to be very nice action. Then they should see, at least... And in the short term, I love what's going on, but I'm looking at the weekly chart, and I say it's all very well, but Chesapeake, you need to break above, I'll tell you right now, for the green line to come into focus, and that would be right there, and that would be, this week would be about 27.30. This week would be fabulous action. Next week, it's actually a little bit lower. Next week, it's 27.25. That would be a green line, and a green line would say, wonderful, finally above the downtrend inside track resistance. So watch 26, <clears throat> 26.50 to 26.04. The close this week under 26 is really not good action. I, you, you'd know that, right? Mm -hmm. But on the upside, it's acting quite nicely right now. I love to see by Tuesday, by Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday by about noon, if this thing can break above 26.96, that'll be a very nice action. Hey, I think you're onto something here, but it's right at the stage where I need proof that it's going to have the power to break, to start now rather than later, a move towards leg D in the monthly. But the fast-moving average of the MACD in the monthly is very strong. Hey, I think this is very nice. Uh, good move, Ari. I like it. Thank you. So thanks for calling. Let's go to John in Philly. Hi, John. How are you? Basil, thanks for taking the call. Basil, um, you're doing Larry's show. Larry oftentimes entertains commodity uh, futures questions. Could you Absolutely. possibly, could you possibly pull up the sugar futures contract? The ticker symbol is SBK. -K I got it right here. What I would like to do, um, I'm on the verge of buying this. I've had buy orders set up for two weeks' time. Haven't been elected yet, but uh, that is my stance. I'm looking to buy into this dip. It's finally getting it. Can you tell me what you see on the daily and the weekly chart, please? If you don't mind, I'm, I can't believe I lost the, oh, my notation here on the, on the, on the con, continuous contract as well. Uh, I, I had a, a sudden close of my computer the other day, and it, it bumped some of my stuff off. So... The, I'm looking at the continuous contract um, of at, at SB uh, right now. And the, I, I know you like to look at the actual uh, contract of the futures itself, but I found that for my work, looking at the continuous contract gives me the long term, even though it's smoothed out, the price uh, the prices themselves are very, very close. And the patterns themselves are very close. And what I'm looking sure, at here, I, I, I just want to say to you, if you're about to put in a buy signal, I mean a buy because you have a signal, I don't have a signal either in the MACD or the slow stochastic on the daily chart. It's made an eight pattern. It's gone below the left side oh, of the 24th of, of uh, March. Um, oh, there's the break. The candle I'm looking at has a low of 16. I'm going to go back to the futures for a moment, and I'll be back with John and Philly looking at sugar contract, and I'll be also back with Robert in Chicago straight after this break. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Hi, folks. Thank you for Daryl straight after this. And Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Presavento. We're on with John and Philly. <clears throat> and I've, I'm looking at the uh, sugar contract. John, I, having taken out the left side low of the 24th, uh, low of 16.67, this is probably the most important session. Why? This is the bar, either this bar or tomorrow. It has to go right back above 1667. Um, and right now the low is at 1665. The low so far is 1653. And it needs to do that at the same time as the stochastic has to go above 20. It has to go to about 22, 23% with a very nice move. And that move has to very quickly go above 1719 was 1739 as the 200 period exponential moving average. Now, I, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at it more as a breakdown at this particular point. So I don't want to change your, if you've been planning this and you've got your price in, the candle I'm looking at <clears throat> has a low of 1662, the candle of the 20th of, of February. It's like a halfway marker almost, not quite a doji, but it's, it's that got that character. So that's going to be very important. How does it how does it hold here? So I'm going to suggest that if you have a position, I would I would only start a position, and I would have to give it room because if this thing if, if sugar breaks under 1640 or 1630 that support, I actually don't see any support for a while. So that's my suggestion. I would personally I would wait. I don't see anything. I know that you're very good at this kind of timing. But a lot's going to have to happen in this bar right here. And this bar has to close above 16. Uh, it has to close above 16.67 in the uh, contract. This is the, uh, 
This is the K contract. This is May contract. And then it has to quickly go to 17 and hold there. If it pops up and retests and then goes to a lower low, that's not good action. So the timing here, I, I, just my own opinion is that I would wait. Is the, is the uh, daily chart Chapman wave count, is this leg D lower at this point in time? It's A, B, C, this is D, yes, correct. Very good. It's You've got D. D there. And on, on the weekly, um, on the weekly, is there any reason, according to your rules, that this contract would, uh, should be expected to make a leg D higher? I, I, because the fast moving average of the MACD is holding well, I'd say there's a chance for a rally, but that rally has to come in really soon. Otherwise, you're using time and you're making lower highs and lower, lower, high, lower highs and lower lows. So I don't see it. It has to close this week, Friday, it has to close nicely above 17, and then you've got a different, and then it looks, it's got a different character. Thanks for that independent viewpoint. Thank you very much for calling, John. Let's go to Robert in Chicago. Hi, Robert. How are you? Hi, Basil. I was wondering if you can give me a, your maybe six-month outlook for a, a ticker symbol, NTRS, Northern Trust. Yeah, I'm still cautious. This is North Trust. I don't quite, I, talking about trust, yeah, you could trust it up till now, but at this particular point, I'm, you know what, six months, I'm just looking at the next six weeks, and I can just tell you this, the resistance of NTRS at 61.15, is at 61 the resistance is at 62.41 to 63.50. If it can't close on Friday above 62.41, but instead it takes makes a new low above uh, below 60.50, I'm thinking this is my actual outlook here is that Northern Trust NTRS will test between 59 and 58.31. 58.31 was the low of the 7th of Feb. So I, looking out, I'd be very cautious on, the, cautious on this stock. If it start, call me again if you see it closing any day above 62.45, and then I'll have another look at it. Wonderful, Basil. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. So, folks, Basil Jefferson for Larry Pesavent. On my services, the opening call. Check it out from page of TFNS. And I'm here every Monday, Monday through Friday, except on holidays, um, between 11 and 12. And thank you for being here. And I just wanted to give one quick heads up. The volatility index, if it slides to the 15. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.